Alrighty then, now that the uh, frame has been cleaned up and recoated, and all the parts have been cleaned up, it's time to uh, start putting this thing back together again. Alright, let's do it. Let's put the frame in first. Alrighty, got the frame back in. The axles are not in, I just placed the, uh, the sprockets where they're supposed to go. So, looking good. Keep going. Alright, so now that the axle, or I'm sorry, now that the uh, frame has been reinstalled, or at least set back into the tub, these frames do, in a sense, free float in the tub. They don't actually just simply sit in the bottom and then you can bolt everything back up again. So as you can see here, it doesn't quite line up. So the frame will have to be lifted and aligned, meaning that the frame itself will not sit on the bottom of the tub. It'll actually be held in place by all of the bolts that hold the axles in. So once I start installing the axles, it'll lift that frame, get everything uh, nice and lined up again and everything else. Axle prep. The reason why I had to cut off two axles is a little bit of rust had gotten in between the axle and the sleeve. So it's important to prep and put a good, a good amount of um, anti-seize, coat those axles with it, and maybe even the inside of your sleeves. You know, you want them to where once you get them on there to be able to slide nicely you know no hang-ups nothing like that and again the, the anti-seize will help you if you need to do maintenance on it later on down the road now <coughs> all of the axles are the same again it's just bar stock right it's literally just a piece of bar stock i have to take a measurement i want to say it's like 17 inches long with the holes drilled in the same spot on all of the axles except for this right side middle one this right side middle one is different because of the sleeve that's going to go on it so if i line up these axles you can see that the holes are off so this middle one here it's because again of where the hole is on the sleeve the center ones if you notice slightly different but this one here, where the hole is, has to line up with that particular axle. So that's the only axle that's going to be different on this machine. And the only difference is, is where this hole is going to be drilled. So, but I didn't need to replace that axle, so that's cool. But, all right, I'm going to go ahead and uh, start installing the four axles that I do have until I can get to the store to buy some more bar stock and uh, drill out some holes in the bar stock, make sure that they're all correctly, you know, um, placed and everything. So, all right, keep going. All right, got all six axles put in. They're all lined up. It's all lined up with the, uh, see right there. They're all in. All right. Next, uh, next I think I'm going to put the transmission in. Just uh, service this, checked all the bands, um, put type F automatic transmission fluid back into it, one quart only, you know, so I'll be resurfacing the uh, clutch and then soon working on the engine. All right. All right, so before I go ahead and put the uh, T20 transmission back into the uh, little 6x6 over there, I went ahead and took apart the clutch. It's real easy. Um, there's a little snap ring that holds it all together right here. You do have a keyway. It's going to match up right there and uh, right here on the shaft. Right, the keyway fits in there. So like I said, a little bit of surface uh, area rust right here on the, um, on the plates where the belt's going to be riding. So nothing that really pits the metal. But I'm going to go ahead and clean all this up. Make this nice and pretty again. Uh, lube it up where it needs to be lubed up. Reclock the spring and uh, put it all back together again before I go ahead and stick the transmission back in it. All right, so I got the clutch back together again. It's pretty stiff. Let me see if I can't move it with one hand here. 
Yeah, that's as far as I can get it. Spring's nice and tight. They like said uh, cleaned up that uh, plate. As you can see, you know that surface rust. There was a little bit of uh, a little bit of uh, marring on the metal. You know, sanded it down as best I could. It's actually very smooth. It's not something that uh, is going to interfere with or tear up a belt at all. So, but like I said, got it all back together again. It's back on the T20, which we're going to go ahead and drop it back into the uh, into the chassis here, right there and right there. Those four are where it mounts. So let's get it back in. All right, now we got the transmission back uh, into its uh, position, its cradle. Now, there, there is a little something weird about putting the transmission in. It's not just a straight down drop into the slots that are cut into the frame. So, when you look, you see that slot right there, right here? Now, this goes up and down, whereas the one in the back right here is actually cut at an angle, right? So, when you put the transmission in... You have to put the two uh, the, the two bolts in the back first, so you're going to lift the transmission, have it kind of at an angle, slide them in this way, and then it sets down in. So that's the only weird thing about transmission. I know I don't show putting that shit in, but it's pretty self-explanatory. All right, so the next thing I have to do is I have to even out these bars. All right, so here's the shifters, right? The, the shifter poles go in there. You can see that I, they're even, but the bars themselves are not even, all right? They're off. So I have to turn these buckles on each side to get them to sit or to run parallel with each other evenly, right? So these stoppers right here on the rubber plugs, I'm gonna get all that shit lined up to where if I pull the sticks back hard enough, I'm not busting bands in the transmission, those rubber stoppers will stop that from happening, but I will still have the brake power that I need. The brakes that you see up here, that's not for stopping the vehicle. So these brakes, they're mechanical brakes. And what these are for is when you shift this transmission out of gear, say to switch traverse between forward and reverse, once you take that thing out of gear, this fucker will roll freely. So you have to mash the brake, keep it in place in order to get it um, into reverse or whatever. So if you're on a downhill slope and you're trying to reverse, the moment you take this sucker out of gear, it's going to free roll unless you put your brake. So stopping, stopping the machine is not done by these. This, these are just to hold it in place. The stopping power comes from pulling both of the levers back and engaging the, uh, the coiled uh, bands that are in there, the brake bands. All right. So, yeah, I have to make these two bars parallel to where the sticks will also be um, parallel with each other. So we're going to have to fix that. These are the shifting arms that connect in here like so, all right? And they go in there like that. And then of course, here's your shifter to shift forward, reverse, neutral. And there's another one right there that does the same. These transmissions can be split shift. In other words, you would make another bracket, cutting this in half, making a shifter for one side, and a shifter for the other side so that they can be shifted independently. One can be shifted forward, the other one can be shifted in reverse, and it would cause the machine to literally pivot in its own footprint. As it stands now with the Argos, you can't do that with those. Those are like a limited slip type, differential type transmission they made. So you can only stop one side from turning while the other side turns, dragging it around as it as it turns in its own footprint, not really in its own footprint. It just pivots around the four wheels that aren't turning where this one here, one, one wheel or one set of tires can go forward and the other set of tires can spin backwards simultaneously, literally pivoting in your own footprint. So that's the cool thing about the T twenties, but that's what I've got to do next. And uh, I'm just going to get to it. Hi right, guys. Thanks for uh, sticking around for part two. And, uh, I hope you're going to look forward to part three, which is uh, coming up next. Thanks for watching, guys.